Good evening and welcome to this virtual tribute to Dean Timothy Fisher. Dean Fisher has, for the past seven years, served as the 17th Dean of the University of Connecticut School of Law. Tim assumed this position of leadership and service following 35 years in private practice, during which time he was a leader in so many different regards, within his firm and within the profession as a whole, through impactful leadership roles with the Connecticut Bar Foundation, the Connecticut Bar Association, nonprofit and community service organizations, vital pro bono initiatives, and countless commissions and boards. I've been a member of the Law School Alumni Association Board of Directors for a number of years and have the honor of serving as the Alumni Association's president this year. I so distinctly remember when Tim came before a small group of alumni leaders as a finalist for the position of dean. The energy and excitement for his leadership was so palpable and electric at that time, and that energy and excitement has remained sustained during his tremendous service as our dean. What was then considered by some to be an unconventional decision has resulted in uncommon success. A stronger law school, more connected to the legal community, more responsive to the needs of its students and alumni, and the unprecedented challenges of our times more present in the many important efforts and initiatives that our profession values and works to advance. Tim, we are deeply grateful for your seven years of leadership and service as Dean of our law school. On a personal note, I've always been inspired by your commitment to access to justice and to diversity and inclusion. I had the privilege of serving under your leadership on what we call the Civil Gideon Task Force, and seen your continued commitment and been able to consult with you in advancing the goal of justice for all. At a time when allyship and the pursuit of racial justice is so crucial, your longstanding commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion has been so important. For these reasons and for many others, I'm privileged to serve as the host of this evening's celebration of you. To all those in attendance, thank you for joining us this evening virtually. While there are certain limitations to a virtual format, the size of this virtual gathering is a testament to our respect for Tim. Throughout the evening, we welcome you to share your well wishes and messages of good cheer through the chat function. Those will be added to a collection that will be preserved and presented to Tim. Throughout this evening, we will hear from many of Tim's colleagues and friends who will share their own remarks and perhaps even a few jokes at Tim's expense. It is now time for us to sit back, relax, and chill. And so with that, I invite Paul Chill, class of 1985, an Associate Dean of Experiential Learning, to share a few remarks. Well, thank you, Cecil. <clears throat> uh, hi, everyone, uh, and thanks for being here tonight. Uh, looking down the guest list, you really are an extraordinary group of friends of Tim and friends of the law school. Um, I'm gonna speak very quickly because I promised to limit the time of my remarks and I wanna stick to my promise. Uh, I'm pleased to say that I've been one of Tim's associate deans for the entire seven years of his deanship and lived to tell about it. Um, seriously, rather than uh, talk about Tim's many accomplishments, as I hope and expect others will do, I want to share a quick story that exemplifies one of the things that I have found most rewarding about working with Tim. From the beginning, I sort of fell into the role of uh, loyal opposition. Uh, frequently expressing doubt and occasionally uh, outright disagreement uh, internally with decisions that Tim was making or directions in which he was moving. Some of this was because, as we subsequently discovered, we have remarkably different personality profiles. A couple of years ago, Tim had all the assistant and associate deans take the DISC assessment uh, of management style that uh, some of you may, uh, may be familiar with. Um, and here's how the two of us came out. I'll let you figure out which one is me and which is Tim. So one of us uh, is skeptical and challenging, works to ensure accuracy, tends to anticipate and plan for what goes wrong, tends to see major changes as risky or stressful, tends to be uncomfortable pressuring others. The other of us expresses passion and enthusiasm for new ideas, initiates action toward bold outcomes, tends to expect things to go relatively well, tends to see change as invigorating, and tends to urge others to move quickly. If you hadn't figured out by that last item that Tim is the second guy, surely you have by now. Anyhow, one day early on, I think it was during Tim's second year, uh, I was feeling increasingly concerned about a particular decision that Tim was moving toward, and it had gathered this seemingly inexorable momentum uh, as Tim's initiatives tend to do, 
um, despite uh, some skept skeptical initial reactions from me and others. In any event, I decided that stronger medicine was necessary. Um, and so I went in to talk to Tim, and after a brief introduction, I told him that I thought he was driving a law school off a cliff. Well, his face fell at that point, and he turned red. Um, and later that evening, I was feeling bad and thinking that I should apologize. So I came in the next morning, went straight to Tim's office, and told him I was sorry for what I'd said, to which Tim replied, sorry about what? Um, and so I explained at which point Tim said that he'd spoken with his wife, Dina, the night before and that she had basically agreed with me. And so I said something like, wow, Dina must think I'm a real pain in your you-know-what, to which Tim replied, to the contrary, Dina considers you her representative on campus. And I thought, well, Dina's a great person and Tim clearly adores her, so he must be happy with the role that I've fallen into. And that's really the point of the story. He really was happy with it. Tim genuinely welcomed and welcomes the kind of honest feedback he got on a regular basis from me and certainly others on our team. That's obviously a critical quality in a leader, especially one with as bold an approach and as sweeping a vision as Tim. And the fact that Tim recognized it and recognized that about himself has been one of his strongest qualities as a leader and made it possible for us not only to work together effectively, but also to become good friends. One footnote, just because Tim actively welcomed feedback doesn't mean he always or even usually followed it. A favorite saying of his when asked whether he was still open-minded about a subject was, quote, my mind is capable of being opened, which I think pretty well captures it. Anyhow, I'll close by saying that I think Tim has been a truly transformational dean for the law school. No one has worked harder for the school, for its students, faculty, and staff as Tim has over the past seven years. Among his many accomplishments, again, which I, I expect others to talk about, um, are two that stand out for me, partly because I saw from the inside what went into them. First is the Brown Campus Center. It transformed campus life, and it absolutely never would have happened without Tim's skillful advocacy and persistence. That project was killed so many times that I couldn't believe it when it actually got done. And the second was Tim's effective advocacy for the law school beginning in 2014-15 when the school came under intense scrutiny and pressure due to shrunken enrollments and revenues that were entirely the result of national trends. Not to mention Tim's success in bringing us back from that precipice through his remarkable ability to execute full court presses in multiple critical, critical areas all at once. All of us, uh, who care about the law school owe Tim a tremendous debt of gratitude, and I'm grateful to all of you for coming tonight to express that. Thank you. Thank you, Associate Dean Paul Chill. Of course, we cannot have a celebration of Tim's service without hearing from one of the students who's benefited from <laughs> the supportive campus space and environment of learning that he has helped to create. And so I now welcome Sharice Alicia. Class of 2019 of McCarter in English uh, to join us for a few remarks. Hi everyone. So the most powerful thing about Tim, not just as a leader, but as a person, is that he always strives to make sure that he makes people feel seen, heard, respected, and supported. And that's what made Tim such an anomaly as Dean. I remember the first time I ever saw Tim on campus, and I don't even think he saw me. He was walking through the campus. I should say towering because I'm very short. And he knew everybody's name. He would greet everybody, and it seemed like he knew everybody's story. And what I quickly found out when I was a student is that he also always made the time to listen. He listened both when things at the law school were great and when students, administration, or faculty disagreed. He created this open door policy where absolutely everyone on campus had access to him. And to me, Tim Fisher changed my life. And that's because he supported me and he believed in me. And I know that he did that for everyone. So at the end of my 2L year, or at the beginning of my 3L year, I remember I didn't have any job prospects and I didn't have a plan and I didn't know how to make a plan. 
And I remember I made an appointment to see him. And we sat in his office and I told him all of these things. And the first thing that he told me was, Sharice, I see you. I see everything that you do on campus. I know your background. I know where you're from. And I know who you are as a student. And with that, I want you to know that I believe in you and that I believe that you will do great things. And he still says these things till this day. But that was one of the defining moments of my law school career because there was someone who had did it, who made it. And he was telling me that he saw all of these great qualities in me. And so with that, I want to say thank you for doing that for me. Thank you for doing that for my friends. Thank you for doing that for the entire law school community. And thank you for always showing us what it means to be a great leader and a great person. Thank you, Sharice, for those powerful words. I now welcome Stephen Greenspan from the class of 1985, also a foundation member of the, or a board member of the Yukon Foundation to give a few remarks. Thanks, Cecil. When, uh, when it was first announced uh, in early 2013 that Tim had been named the Dean of the Law School, I think it was widely viewed as a stark departure from the attributes of the 16 law school deans that had preceded him in the then 90, 92 year history of the law school. Uh, Tim, I don't know if I ever told you the story, but in, in the spring of 2013, I was at a, an ABA corporate council meeting uh, in Chicago uh, and a somewhat, uh, let's say, pretentious dean from a top 20 law school remarked to me how uh, risky, he actually used the word risky, it was uh, during our dinner uh, for UConn to have hired uh, hired you as dean. And, and I responded uh, with somewhat sort of feigned incredulity to say uh, that I just didn't understand what the fuss was about. Why couldn't we hire a six foot four inch uh, dean of the law school? Uh, but, but in all seriousness, uh, everyone who knew you, Tim, at the time, recognized that your appointment was really a stroke of creative, de uh, creative genius. You were a private practitioner and you, as, as we all know, you were a real trial lawyer. Uh, and I think uh, in retrospect, uh, you were just what the law school needed uh, at the time. Our law school had always had dedicated and scholarly faculty, but the law school had become a little bit disconnected to the practicing bar. And given the strong clinical programs at the school, and what I've always described, as you know, Tim, is the, what I think is a vocational role that UConn Law School plays to educate the next generation of judges and lawyers and legislators in Connecticut, I, I think you fit the bill just right. But, but make no mistake about it, I also know that, that uh, you, uh, you were and, and still are an academic. You love the classroom. Uh, I think you love the classroom even more than, uh, than you loved uh, the courtroom. I'll leave it to others to comment uh, in terms of uh, at which you were, uh, you were uh, stronger. Uh, but, but everyone should know that Tim taught for many years, long before he became a dean candidate as an adjunct. Um, and I know from personal experience as his colleague, that his students were always enthralled with his instruction his, and, and his enthusiasm, which really was quite a feat given the dryness of, of, of the subjects of commercial paper and, and negotiable uh, uh, instruments law. Uh, and, and it also bears mention that, that I think you were really ahead of your time. I, I never saw anyone use a PowerPoint to teach a class until you did it. And I think you did it about 20 years ago. Uh, now it seems to be pretty standard practice, but. Uh, uh, you, were, you really thought about how to connect to uh, your students. But most importantly, on a personal level, I was fortunate to work with, with you, Tim, during my term as the president, my extended term as the president of the Law School Foundation. Uh, when you became dean, uh, I think everyone knows this, Tim learned very quickly that uh, the law school faced what I would describe as a daunting challenge to grow its development function. Uh, as state funding diminished, it was clear to you and to everybody else on the faculty that the law school needed stronger philanthropic support. And you realized that the law school couldn't support the, the administrative and the staff <clears throat> infrastructure that was needed to grow the annual fund and, and really most importantly to grow the endowment. So, so you took the courageous step, Tim, of suggesting to me and to others that it would be to the long-term benefit of the law school to disband our own foundation and merge it into the Yukon Foundation. Uh, I work closely with you, Tim, uh, as most people on this call I think know, for. Uh, three and a half years to make your vision a reality. We worked together to build consensus on the board to support what ultimately was 
a unanimous vote in favor of joining forces with the UConn Foundation. And, and I would say, Tim, that uh, three years, three and a half years in, the merger, the merger of sorts with the UConn Foundation has been a great success uh, on any standard uh, of measurement. And, and Tim, just like everything else that you've accomplished in your career, you got us to the right place with, with steady guidance, with, with logic, and not by uh, resorting to table pounding or arm twisting. And, and you certainly kept me from uh, uh, pursuing either of those uh, techniques. And, and that's because that's what, what leadership is. And Tim, uh, I've admired your steady and sound advocacy from the first time we met, as you know, in 1987 as opposing counsel in an arbitration. So, so my parting comment really is very, very easy. Uh, thanks for everything uh, back in 87 for not embarrassing me and for everything you've done in between. Uh, you left the school in far better shape than when you found it and it was in a pretty good place when you arrived. Uh, and that's not bad for a very tall trial lawyer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. It's now time to take a little trip down memory lane uh, and also to hear from a few uh, individuals who wanted to share their sentiments with you, Tim. Uh, so I now uh, will welcome the introduction of the video that we've spoken about. Uh -oh. <laughs> <clears throat> to the legal system in Connecticut. It's truly astounding how much ground you've covered um, from being one of the finest lawyers in private practice in Connecticut to your pro bono work for the wrongly convicted, to your work on so many task force and commissions to improve the state of the legal system, and finally to your work as dean of UConn Law School. You have left a lasting imprint. On a personal level, I also want to thank you for being such an important sounding board as we made changes to bring the judicial branch into the 21st century. Your calm assessment of ideas and unparalleled strategic thinking were enormously helpful. For all of this, I want to sincerely thank you. I know that the next generation of lawyers are in good hands as you continue to teach them at the law school, and I look forward to seeing what you do with the next chapter. Tim, when you left us five years ago, we knew it was a loss. We were losing a great attorney, a great partner, a great leader, friend, and mentor. But we knew then what UConn Law knows now. We knew that your intelligence, your work ethic, your energy, and your passion is unmatched. We have been so proud to watch you and see that all that you've done for the UConn Law students, the UConn Law community, and the legal community in general. We are so proud of you and we wish you the best and congratulate you today. Hey Dean Fisher, Chris Murphy here. Um, boy, we're heartbroken that you are leaving, uh, but we're also proud of what you have done to build a strong, vibrant uh, legal education community in Hartford. Uh, and as a graduate of UConn Law School and a member of the community, I'm just so grateful for the connections that you've made between uh, the campus and policymakers. Uh, you most recently allowed me to come and give my first speech in Connecticut after my impeachment vote uh, at UConn Law School. And uh, I just think that um, that interconnection uh, between the current events at the state level, the national level, uh, and the law school um, makes for uh, a stronger school and better prepared graduates. Um, so, uh, Tim, uh, thank you for everything you've done for the state of Connecticut, for the legal community in our state. We know that you're not going to go far. I'm happy to have this opportunity to thank you for your inspired and inclusive leadership during your tenure as dean. 
You clearly understood the need for the law school to engage more broadly with the community as well as its alumni. You've achieved a lot. Now others can continue to build on what you started. It was my pleasure to support you in your efforts, and I'm happy to know that you will continue to be a part of the law school community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been quite a run, Tim. Had its emotional, physical highs and lows, as we all know, change is not always welcomed by academics, but you steered us through the headwinds and around the submerged rocks and have remade and elevated this law school. Along the way, you also raised extemporaneous speaking to an art form. You're passing the helm to a law school that's fully functioning on an upward trajectory and one that is nimble enough to deal with the obvious challenges that await. You have been a truly transformative dean and the whole community is in your debt. I personally stand in all of your accomplishments and thank you for all you have given us. Hello, Tim. Nancy Rankin here from the Todd Baum Coast of Maine and greetings and hello to the entire law school community. I want you to know that Hugh would have insisted on driving down to be with you today at this important time to mark the end and celebrate your tenure as Dean. For Hugh, Tim, the major achievement of your tenure was taking the helm of the school at a dangerous and difficult time and steering us not merely to safety, but to a better place. So, Tim, to you, from your spirit and from me, please receive deep affection, deep admiration, and most importantly, deep, deep gratitude.
Tim, I hope you enjoyed that video tribute, which uh, will be available on YouTube, I understand. So we're going to make you an internet star by the end of the evening. Um, of course, uh, UConn Law School, as much as we like to think of us ourselves as um, an island unto ourselves as part of a broader uh, UConn Nation family. And so I welcome uh, the new provost of the University of Connecticut, Carl Lejouet, to give a few remarks. The, the university was looking for a transformative dean who could come in and raise enrollment numbers and find graduates good jobs. Tim succeeded extremely in both of those cases, plus much more. I just want to talk about a few of those things. He really worked hard and succeeded in elevating the law school's reputation. UConn School of Law has moved up from 65th to 50th place in the U.S. News and World Report list of best law schools. Law school scores increased in seven different factors weighted in this ranking, including reputation, admissions, selectivity, and post-degree employment. UConn Law has consistently been recognized as one of the country's leaders in affordability as measured by ratio of first-year salaries to law school debt, and came in 12th in the country in the latest analysis. He also changed the campus. Over 30 million in campus improvements, including the Brown Family Campus Center. And I really like this, at the dedication ceremony, he likened the study of law to a conversation and said the Campus Center is the ideal place to nurture that conversation. He was a strong advocate in diversity efforts. He sought a more lasting way to showcase and recognize the contributions that women have made to the law school. For example, in April 2019, he unveiled four portraits of women, two of them African-American that will hang in the reading room walls. And even more than that, I've been really impressed and touched by uh, the way folks tonight have talked about his inclusivity and the way that he's truly impacted so many people in the law school. He's embraced uh, the history of the law school. He unveiled the Gallery of Pioneers at a reception in the Thomas J. Mesco Law Library in 2019. The subjects represent and symbolize the best things we bring to the world, he said. 80 graduates, faculty members, and friends of the, law the Connecticut Yukon Law School are being featured in a portrait gallery celebrating these achievements. It has been echoed by all who work with Tim Fisher that he has been an incredible dean and an incredible colleague. Now, I will say, I've been working with Tim for three months over Zoom, and his head doesn't even reach the top of the screen. So I just figured he was five foot eight the whole time. So I'm a little uh, thrown off by his height that I that I've gotten to see tonight. But I will also say he has an in infectious smile and and just a way of making someone feel comfortable and welcome and ready to roll up your sleeves and work together. And I've just appreciated him so much. And I, I know that the university is a much better place because of him. Thank you, Provost Lishway. Um Sorry, one minute. It looks like we have a surprise visitor joining us. Hi, Cecil, thank you. And hi, Tim, hi, neighbor. Uh, what a wonderful tribute to you tonight. I mean, it's been inspiring just to hear your colleagues and your students speak about the contributions and the recognition is so well deserved. Uh, you've been such an incredible leader for the law school, but also for all of UConn. I just want to add a little bit uh, to this celebration. It's such a pleasure to join you and 150 others tonight um, celebrate uh, the celebrate your deanship, your successful tenure, but also the accomplishments of a great law school over the past seven years. I got a chance to learn um, about, a little bit more about this law school uh, last spring at my last in-person visit to a school before COVID hit. Uh, I, 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 get, I hope there was nothing causal about that, but uh, I came away with an appreciation for how this school is focused on the student experience its strength in scholarship, its best practices in supporting student mental health that I believe could be a model for all of UConn, by the way, and its extraordinary commitment to both law and the public interest and experiential learning by students. Uh, none of this excellence, of course, happens by accident. So let me talk a little bit more about you and your leadership. Uh, as all of you know, 
Tim became dean of the UConn Law School seven years ago. He came to UConn after 35 years and successful practice, but a long history in addition of pro bono work in public service, including founder of the Connecticut Innocence Fund, president of the Connecticut Connecticut Bar Foundation, and member of the Governor's Commission on Judicial Reform. A few highlights from his deanship, Tim vastly expanded public and alumni engagement with a wide variety of civic and scholarly events on campus. The annual total of new gifts and commitments to the law school has doubled during his deanship. He established the Connecticut Community Law Center, an incubator to help new lawyers set up solo practices serving low and moderate income clients on the Yukon Law Campus. He, as has been mentioned, he opened the Brown Family Campus Center uh, that has transformed life at the, at, at the campus. He introduced two new LLM degrees. Not surprisingly, in keeping with the theme here, you'll notice these are in areas of greater public good. One of them in human rights and the other in social, one in human rights and social justice and the other in energy and environmental law. He established a partnership with Hallyum University in South Korea to offer an executive LLM. He added animal law, elder law, and veterans benefit advocacy clinics to the law school's offering, offerings. He swiftly pivoted the law school to online learning this spring during the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic and provided steady leadership that enabled the school to navigate through the crisis. Not a bad run, Tim. But more than anything, Tim, you have guided the school to a position of strength upon which to build further. Every school advances by absorbing and institutional, institutionalizing the ideas uh, of its leader, keeping those as it adds on with the vision from the next. Tim, you've built a better law school and your support has played a critical role in recruiting your and our next dean and supporting her successful transition. So for all of these things, we express our gratitude and celebrate you and your successful tenure. Thank you, Tim. Here's to you. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, President Katsalaeus, uh, for your surprise visit and your kind remarks. I now welcome Tom Ritter, who has known Tim for over 50 years, uh, to raise a toast in Tim's honor. Okay, sorry, I thought those all, I thought we, when we prearranged it, I thought that was going to be done. So anyway. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. Sorry for that. Um, I was going to say, yes, it's been 50 years. We both grew up in the West End and we uh, still live in the West End, so but it's it's been it's a great neighborhood, and uh, gosh, Tim went to Hartford High with my brother Scott, and we're probably the only two people on this phone call or this uh, Zoom that think about UConn Law School as a seminary buildings because right I mean it was a seminary it used to be the Hartford Seminary, uh, till the state in its wisdom uh, bought the buildings in the late sixties. The um, I think I originally met Tim through his father, Clyde, who was um, a great lawyer, just like, like Tim, and volunteered to help my dad, who was a novice uh, energy person and spent a lot of time at the legislature. I mean, your dad really was the person that, if any, it, just as a volunteer from the neighborhood, if anybody who needed something with energy had to go through your dad, that's how close uh, he and my, my, my dad were, and, and, and your mother, Alice, just the sweetest person in the world, so I mean, it's, you can't, I can't think of you, Tim, without thinking of your parents, and and I know you're a product of your parents because I know them. I knew them so well, and uh, uh, I know they're they're obviously very proud of you. The I mean, people have said why we needed someone like Tim, and I saw uh, Judge Droney who had said some nice words, but you know he was on the selection committee along with others, and we had unconventional committee too, which I think shows when you need to find someone for the time you also need to find that person and, and i appreciate judge your leadership there and everybody else and uh i mean Tim, we we're looking at enrollment and we were looking at um people's needing jobs and, and you really stepped up to the plate and, and did what you had to do uh, i don't think you realized you were also going to be in charge of gardens and uh you're going to be the commissioner of the soccer league but as i explained to ebony who i know is on this also that's a very important part uh of your job. Let me just say, as, as we conclude and, and offer you a toast, that, uh, I mean, everybody has talked about how Tim worked at, um, in Hartford, but I think it's just a lesson that, you know, you wish you were an island, 
but you're not an island. And I, I don't think Tim really knows how every now and then he would get some people at stores not happy because he was such an advocate for the law school. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. But uh, I was very proud to, to uh, run interference for you because I knew what you're doing. You were fighting like hell for the law school over some archaic things. And sometimes things like provost and other things shouldn't stand in the way for what should happen. So uh, everybody here should know that while obviously you worked very hard within the system, you did whatever you had to do to help your law school. And, and those of us who were so proud to see you selected know you, you did your job, Tim. And uh, it's great you're still going to be in the neighborhood. And hopefully we'll know each other for another 20 years anyway. Right. Thank you. Well, Tim, you don't get the last word, but you get to say a little something yourself now. So we welcome the man of the hour uh, to give us a few uh, remarks. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. Um, and is the audio working okay? okay? All right. So, wow, this is intense. Um, I am so grateful. I'm grateful to everybody who's spoken. I'm grateful to everybody who was on the video and everybody who helped make this happen. And I'm grateful to everybody who's joined this evening. Um, I, I've seen your names and you all mean so much to me. And it's so beautiful to see people from so many stages of my life. Um, I think it's my cousin, Wendy in Australia, who's known me the longest. And she got really early in the morning. Thank you, Wendy, to be part of this tomorrow. Um, so I love this school. I love what it stands for. I love the great things that our graduates are able to do. And I love the work that we do that puts them, put them in that position to be able to be so successful. Uh, an incredibly dedicated staff, uh, extraordinary faculty um, who are just so focused on that mission and making sure that that wonderful people who come in our doors at the beginning of their law school careers leave with a sense of confidence and clarity with, with possession of one of the greatest tools that um, a society and a government can provide. So that's just a, a magnificent thing of what we do. And uh, it was a joy to be able to be part of it. Um, of course, one of the things about being the head of an organization, being dean, is you get credit for all the work that other people do. So just about every single thing that everybody heard about over the course of this has, was really thanks to other people who made it happen and did all the work. Um, and and uh, they know who they are. But I do have to say, uh, the, the associate deans who have been working with me for the last few years, Paul Chill, who you met, Darcy Kirk, our academic dean, and Leslie Levin, our associate dean for research, are remarkable people in the way they put the interests of the institution ahead of their own and work incredibly hard. And, and I drew upon their energies and their time enormously and I'm terrifically grateful for that. And then um, our Assistant Dean for Finance Administration and Enrollment, Karen DiMiola. I learned more on this job from Karen than from anyone else or any other part of my experiences. She was the most wonderful counselor, and a real true friend. And I couldn't have done this w without Karen. And um, of course, so many others. The, I wanna thank those of you who took a chance on me seven years ago. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> you saw more, I think, than I did of what, what, what might be. Um, the donors who have voted with their pocketbooks for this school and for our students, I am so incredibly grateful to you and our students and our faculty and our school are so fortunate for your generosity and your loyalty. Um, the alumni, the, the, the courts and the legislature, the government of this state, uh, you are our constituents. We are the law school of the state of Connecticut. The taxpayers support us. We owe so much back to you. And I, you know, it's just been a joy to build those relationships. Um, and especially the Law School Alumni Association, you, Cecil, as president and, and your predecessors. What a, what a terrific partner you folks have been for me, but for the school and, and for our students especially. Um, I'm thrilled that my family got to be here, our sons and our daughter. 
are able to be part of this. And, um, you know, I think they knew something about what my job was, but mostly they knew I wasn't around so much. So we are really looking forward to the next stage of life. And I'm really looking forward to being part of the faculty and, and helping the school and our students in a new role. Um, and, and I do want to call out Allison Swain, our alumni relations director who, who organizes so much and facilitates so many of those of those relationships and events, um, including tonight. Um, but, but I really want to add one important thing, and that is how incredibly happy I am that Ebony Nelson has decided to come to Connecticut to lead this school. We are so fortunate. I have gotten to know Ebony pretty well over the last few months, um, and she brings exactly what we need at this moment. And um, maybe some of you can appreciate the feeling I have is um, when your kids grow up and you see them get happily married. You know, the school is going to, it's, it's got it's the, it's the right person coming next. And so uh, we are very fortunate. Our students are very fortunate. Um, there are great, great years ahead. So thank you to all of you. This is a very intense emotional evening for me and uh, it means an enormous amount to see you and hear from so many of you in this way. Thank you for making these last seven years such a wonderful, wonderful experience for me. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Tim, for your kind words. I greatly appreciate that. And I join everyone in congratulating you on completing your successful tenure as Dean of the Law School. Your leadership and contributions both inside and outside the law school have positively impacted our law school and broader communities. I thank you for your service, for your commitment to justice, for your commitment to diversity, inclusion, and equity, which changes lives on a daily basis. I also thank you for providing invaluable mentorship to me as I transition into my new role. You have been so gracious with your time, advice, and expertise, warnings, <laughs> which I greatly appreciate, and I will be forever indebted to you for that. Your tenure as Dean is a testament to the great strides an institution can make in challenging times. And I will strive to emulate that during my time as Dean. I look forward to working with you and everyone at the law school, as well as members of the legal profession and the surrounding community to build upon the foundation that you have laid for the continued success and advancement of the law school. Thank you so much, congratulations, and I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. I can't wait to be one of your professors. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure can't wait to have you as one of my professors. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Desi uh, Nelson. Um, as we come to a close, I just ask that all of you uh, raise a glass in Tim's honor. Uh, Tim, you have been a transformational leader, uh, a powerful leader, an impactful leader. And for that, we are truly grateful and will always be grateful. Here's to you. Here, here. Um, in closing, uh, we had looked for the appropriate tribute uh, to Tim Fisher. And... Um, we spent not a, a small amount of time actually investigating the, the idea of a uh, personalized Yukon branded bike for his many biking adventures. Unfortunately, that um, process ended when they asked me for uh, specific measurements for Tim and I wasn't really ready to go do that. So uh, we decided a more fitting tribute uh, was one that would last. And so in Tim's honor, we have established the Dean Timothy Fisher scholarship fund. Uh, and some of you may have seen information about that uh, in the invitation to this event and we'll receive further communications about that, but could not think of a more fitting tribute to uh, Tim's leadership uh, and a lasting testament to your service to the law school. Um, and so I'm proud that we've been able to open that up in your honor, Tim. 
Um, I want to thank also uh, Allison Swain, who's been mentioned before, for her tireless energies and efforts in bringing this event about. Uh, and also Ron Fleury and Colby Plaskowitz at the Yukon Foundation for their support for this event and for the formation of the fund. I want to thank Jean LeBlanc and the communications team who have put together that uh, amazing tribute video uh, with contributions from far and wide. I want to thank the Law School Alumni Association's Board of Directors and in particular the committee that has worked hard to uh, bring about this event. To all of our speakers who've joined us, thank you for your heartfelt and, and uh, funny tributes. And Tim, again, thank you for all that you've done for the law school that we love so much. We are ever in your debt. Thank you all for joining us this evening, and I wish you all a good night. <laughs>